Ooh, that hurt. Don't make fun of me for what I'm looking like right now. I heard they're gonna kill me. Hey guys, so I forgot to film an intro for this video, so this is gonna be the intro. Basically, um, this is gonna be a new thing on my channel. I'm gonna, I wanna see how this goes. Uh, so basically, it's gonna be me painting and drawing a picture, and with that painting, is gonna coincide with some facts or story I'm gonna tell you about. And yeah, I think in the recording I talk about more in detail of what it's gonna be like. So yeah, let's get on with the video. All right guys, so today's facts that I will be discussing is about The Little Mermaid, the Disney movie. So pretty much I've searched some stuff about The Little Mermaid movie and we're gonna talk about it. So if you guys wanna join, come along with me. The first fact about The Little Mermaid is that The Little Mermaid almost didn't happen. It was almost not even a Disney movie, guys. Like, that's insane. The reason for it is that the Disney Studios were working on a sequel to the, to the popular movie comedy Splash when Ron Clemens pitched his idea for The Little Mermaid. The Disney CEO at the, at the time temporarily nixed the Disney Little Mermaid idea, saying two mermaid movies would be a little too much, according to Cinema Blend. He later reversed his decision, and the rest, Disney, is history. Um, the second fact that I found is that the blue-green hue on Ariel's fin was specially mixed by the Disney paint lab they called the new color Ariel in honor of her. The next fact, fact number three, is the color of Ariel's hair was a point of contention amongst the team. The red was chosen in part because red and green are contemporary colors, and also because Daryl Hannah had just played a blonde mermaid in a very popular movie, Splash, like I said earlier. So what I thought was interesting about this fact is the fact that red and green are contemporary colors, and red and green are also Christmas colors. So hence the fact that Ariel came out around that time was pretty cool. The color... The second fact is the color in the overcast opening of the film was deliberately muted because she, because the director wanted to save the bright colors for under the sea. So if you guys don't know what I'm talking about about the opening scene, I'm talking about the opening scene where Prince Eric and his boat team or whatever, his ship, they were all like, they were showing Prince Eric on the ship like, doing the sails and everything, you could tell that the color was very muted, but then once they went under the sea, the colors were bright and beautiful. Many of the sailors dancing on Prince Eric's ship are caricatures of people from the staff that made the movie. The man dancing on the platform is reportedly Razul Azdani, sorry, I don't know if I pronounced the name right, but who has worked with Ron Clemens and John Musker on several films. He is recently was the layout artist on Paper Man. The next fact is, sorry guys, I didn't say the next fact on most of them. I'm just nervous and this voice recording is very stressful. <laughs> um, in the next fact is in the opening scene with King Triton, who seen who can you can see Kermit, Mickey Mouse, Goofy, and Donald Duck hiding in the crowd. That is so interesting. I heard about this fact a long time ago, and I remember going back to the movie and actually seeing them in the crowd. It's like you could see them so clear. Once you see them, you can never unsee them. Another fact is that you could also see Mr. Limpet and Duke and King from Cinderella all make surprise cameos throughout the film. If you look closely, you could spot each of the recognition characters in their specific scenes, but if you blink, you might miss it. The next fact is on the naming of Ariel's many sisters, so the scene where King Triton did the little show with all his, I think, seven daughters, um, all the na some of the names from those da King Triton's daughters have a meaning to them. So the first daughter, Athena, I think I saw that right, who was inspired by the musical Alan McKinnon, 
Man Ken, I think I saw that right, I don't know, wrote called a Athena, Evil Queen of the Galaxy. The next sister, Elena, was Howard Ashman's lyrical nod to Alan McKinnon. And lastly, and Andri uh, Andrea was the name of one of the director's aerobics instructor. What is that's so random that they must have been so caught up on trying to figure out a names for these characters that they just thought that one man just thought Andrea Andrea because she's my aerobic instructor like what speaking of the cameos there are a few hidden mickeys in the film the first hidden mickey in the film is seen on Ursula's contract for Ariel the second hidden mickey is a bit more inconspicuous during a scene with Prince Eric's chef so basically what hidden mickeys are are basically kind of what it says hidden mickeys they usually th put them throughout movies they put them all over the Disney parks you can see them everywhere um, and yeah that's pretty much what it means so disclaimer um, I forgot to press record when I painted the sun in the ocean I apologize so this is so if you're confused on why the scene cut straight from the sky to blue ocean yellow sun or moon or whatever I apologize. I didn't realize I didn't click it. I realized it after I painted everything, so I can't go back on that. Um, so yeah, that's just why. <laughs> back to the facts. Ariel's cave full of treasures has some hidden Easter eggs as well. Watch the scene with Ariel Solo, part of your world, and keep your eyes peeled for any other hidden treasures. You can see the bust of Abraham Lincoln on one of the shelves of Ariel's Cave of Wonders, and even the fa the famed painting, I don't even know how to say that, Magdolian with the Smoking Flame by George de la Torre. Hmm. Who would have known? I wouldn't. <laughs> Next fact, is Ariel's solo part of your world? Get ready for this. Was almost cut from the film. I thought the fact that they weren't going to make the film was worse, but this, I think, was the icing on the cake. Part of Your World was almost removed from the film after an initial test screening showed audience members weren't in love with it. Jeffrey Katz Katzenberg wanted to cut the song Part of Your World indefinitely from the film. Fortunately, a positive second round of screening saved the sentimental scene from, chopping the block, from the chopping block. And Jeffrey for sure said, he quoted, he admits now that that's the most embarrassing story he will ever tell. The character, Ursula, was inspired by a famous drag queen. Baltimore-based drag queen and actress Divine inspired early sketches of iconic Disney villain Ursula. The next fact about Ursula is Disney wanted uh, Bay Arthur to voice Ursula. Pat Carl apparently wasn't the first choice for the voice of a Ursula. Golden Girls star Bay Arthur was actually the person that in the studios wanted to voice the sea witch. According to HuffPost, apparently, author's agent was not a fan of the idea. Next fact is Ursula isn't an octopus. Well, kinda. In the film, Ursula is a Cecilia, which is a mythical hybrid of a human and an octopus. So she kind of is an octopus, but they put a fancy name next to it saying that she's not. But I think she's an octopus just with a woman head. <laughs> next fact is in the original development drawing of Ursula, she was portrayed as a spine fish or a scorpion fish with lots of spikes and spines. So basically she was going to be an underwater spider, but they decided to make her as a octopus or Sicilian. <laughs> um, next fact is when Flounder is talking about Scuttle, he is physically transformed into him, into the seagull for a few frames. So if you guys don't know, Scuttle is one of the characters in the film. He is one of the seagulls in the film. That's really close to Flounder and Ariel. Flounder is one of Ariel's and best friends of Ariel's. And pretty much one of the scenes he describes Scuttle 
And as you could see through the scene, he's actually transforming into him, which is pretty cool, not gonna lie. The next fact is the shark's name is Glut. Though it is never mentioned in the film, originally Glut was going to return for another fight, only to be defeated by Flounder in the moment of glory, but it got cut out as the story was simplified. So the shark in the film that chased Ariel and Flounder out of the wrecked, wrecked ship was basically the first fight and they were going to make another fight that Flounder was going to beat him in, but they cut it out, like I said. The next fact is Disney didn't animate the bubble scene in the film. So the scene where the, the glut, the shark was stuck in that little um, anchor and Flounder is like uh, sticking his tongue out at him. It's basically not real bubbles. So due to the limited resources and the intense amount of required animation work, Disney outsourced the animated animation of the bubble scene in Little Mermaid to Pacific Rim Productions. According to the book, The Political e Economic of Disney, The Cultural Capitalism of Hollywood. Hmm. The bubbles looked real to me. <laughs> the next fact is after being moved uh, after being moved to tears by the Little Mermaid, a New Jersey State Trooper called his estranged daughter to repair their friendship, their relationship. He, he wrote to Ron Clemens, the writer and director, to tell them the story. The next fact that I saw was insane. Ariel and Hercules are sort of cousins. Yes, sort of cousins. Given that Zeus is Hercules' father and King Triton, the father of Ariel, is son of Poseidon, who is Zeus's brother, well, Ariel and Hercules are first cousins. I was blown away when I heard this. And I looked at other sources and this was all over, so I think this is true. <laughs> um, this is the first Disney film to ever win a Oscar to win an Oscar since the 19, 1972. Considering this was Alan McKinnon's first musical Disney film, it rather impressive it, it was rather impressive that the movie won best original music score at the 1990s Academy Awards. That's insane. And last but not least, the fact Alan McKinnon had never written an underscore for a Disney movie before. So The Little Mermaid was considered his dry run. He thought his first music cue was horrible and was sure he was would get fired. But little did he know that he was about to make a movie that was going to make lives throughout Disney fall in love with it. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed the painting I did. And yeah, I hope you guys have a great day. Bye.